Saturday Tea Time Hoops here on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Today, the Newcastle Eagles travel to Guildford to face the Surrey Scorchers. The Eagles are locked in that fight for fourth place in the league to guarantee home advantage in the playoff quarterfinals. Whereas Surrey are looking to avoid eighth spot and a playoff clash with the London Lions. The last time these two teams met, the Eagles crushed the Scorchers by 41 points. But this is a different Surrey team now, as Dan Routledge and Ant Rowe can tell you. Certainly is to hear. Thank you very much. Welcome to the sports park. Sorry, I'll be hoping to shoot the three ball better than they did in that last game at Newcastle. If they're going to take off uh, the Eagles today, they're going to have to make threes. Sorry. Well, that's something that they do. The way they play basketball, they're second in the league at three point attempts per game. They get the volume up. If they shoot a half decent percentage, they always put themselves in a good position to win the game. Well, let's have a look at the starting fives for today's game, starting with the Surrey Scorchers, and they're still without Justin Robinson to Gooden, maintains his spot in the starting five. Jameson is there to clean up the misses. Everybody else is looking to hit the three balls. At the other end of the floor, Newcastle Eagles with a familiar looking starting five. They're a little thinner on the bench today. No Josh Ward Hibbert, he is still out for them, but this five have the capability of putting big numbers on the board. Well, we talk about Surrey's three-point shooting, the guy whose role it is to turn those into twos when they miss, Saquon Jameson. It's their six-for-eight center from Washington, D.C. He's always been a physical, high-energy player, but he's improved this year offensively. He consistently finishes around the rim, and he's been more of an impact player from them. A walking double-double average in 10 point points per game, 10 rebounds, but had a monstrous game uh, last time these two teams met. 24 points, 11 rebounds, and six assists. And the driving force behind the Newcastle Eagles, their point guard, Jordan Johnson. It's the Eagles superstar point guard who's led them the whole season. He boasts valuable experience from his time in Germany, Holland, and more importantly, his British Basketball League experience with the Glasgow Rocks. Had a really big game against these, the, 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 the last time these two teams met, 19 points and a season high, 14 assists. So look for him to do much of the same against Surrey. Well, Mark Stutel will be looking for his team to bounce back from a disappointing defeat on Thursday. Can they do it? Find out after this break.
welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. The veteran Keith Williams amongst the referees tonight, Joe Hodgson and Tahir Khan alongside him. And we are set to go in a game that has implications for both these teams in terms of where they want to finish, what seeding they can get. Surrey basically have to win out and hope that's enough to catch Bristol in uh, seventh place. Newcastle, well, if they lose this one, fourth suddenly becomes very difficult indeed. We're off and underway, and it is the Newcastle Eagles who will start it off. Ricky McGill, who had a sensational game here at the sports park earlier this season. Looking for Green. Green trying to go to work. It's back out to Johnson. Johnson from near half court, late in the shot clock, but still a long way out. Wow, just a little bit over dribbling there from Tyus Green, and the spacing was all off. You saw two big guys there cramped and clustered that key, which left very poor spacing for Newcastle Eagles. And Jordan Johnson was thrown a grenade with you know seconds remaining on the shot clock. Foul court against Taj Green, so it's a sideline ball to the Surrey Scorchers. Wang, Steele running the curl, gets it down to Jameson. Jameson inside for two. So much more composed than though. You see that split second before he made a move, he gathered himself, and it was an easy hook shot there over the defender. McGill for a deep three off the front of the rim. Thought Darius was going to shoot it there as well from way out. And driving to the hole is Jordan Johnson. That's a bit more in character, getting all the way to the rim, and he'll shoot two. Well, that's exactly it. He's that type of player that can create something out of nothing. He's that crafty player, good dribble. You see that power dribble there, he gets a hit on the arm. And with Newcastle, you, know, you never quite know what you're going to get. I would classify them as the one of the most unpredictable teams this year. It's not, they have an abundance of talent, so it's not a, a shortage in that supply. But Jordan Johnson's been one of those consistent pieces. 32 points in that narrow loss against Bristol Flyers on Thursday evening. So he's a player in good form that they're going to want to get a lot out of today in order for them to get a result down in Surrey. It's a game they really should have won. Yeah, for three quarters. They were the better team, but credit to Bristol. 37 points in the fourth quarter to come rallying back. 14-2 start to that quarter as well. They had to quickly close the gap. Newcastle on the run. Defoe first down court, and Defoe lays it in off the glass. That's fantastic work there from Darius Defoe. It's a what do you call a rim runner. So he's ran all the way down, beat all the defenders down the floor. Good position on the baseline, and his point guards found him. Foul cord for the slap down. Darius has got his hand up to a foul there. That's the first time you've seen him do that. <laughs> Doesn't own up to too many, he Darius. He does not. He does not, but he feels it was a good foul, so he wants to look at this. Great bounce pass and good use of the baseline space there from the old veteran, Darius Defoe. Wang at the free throw line, knocks down the first one, shooting in the low 70s from this distance today. Another big crowd in at the uh, sports park. It's always a great atmosphere when you come to Guildford. Yeah, it is. I remember many uh, uh, fixtures there and the fans were, you know, there wasn't very many empty seats. Of course, the next natural progression for them now would be to move into their own facility and have two sides of, 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 of full fans, which would be which would be great, and hopefully that's something that's they're working on behind the scenes. Sorry, in a bit of a zone here. We've seen that a lot from them this season. Kick to Defoe, mid-range off the mark. Wang with the rebound. Pass is deflected, but it still reaches Steele. Jameson. Wow. Well, he must have been confident in that because he was halfway down the court. He was a long way short. <laughs> he was, and usually he's a guy that chases, chases every rebound. rebound. Green underneath is fouled. Not a bad foul, that, by Steele, because it had been an easy dunk. Yeah, I think that's a good foul. What you don't want to do is get players these plays that increase their confidence early, and dunk shots certainly do that. Good hard foul there from Josh Steele. Well, 
Well, the Newcastle Eagles, if they can win this game today, will be level on record with Sheffield, both with 18 wins and 16 losses. The problem Newcastle have is they're in a little bit of a battle with Sheffield and, and maybe Leicester behind them as well, but they've lost the head-to-head -to, -head to both of those teams. So they can't afford to finish level with either of them. They have to finish above them if they want the... Uh, they have to have more wins, basically, if they want the highest spot. I think that's why that last loss against Bristol yeah. is so painful in that, that it was a lack of focus. And, you know, the, again, I, I caveat by saying not taking anything away from Bristol Flyers, who I thought were excellent. Their, their, their resilience, their fight was, was, was next level and was deserving of the win. But Newcastle Eagles at home, that's one of those games that you have to close out. Gooden fires up the three, and of course, compounded by the fact that Sheffield went and beat Caledonia the next day. So now it's out of Newcastle's hands for fourth. Here's uh, Austin going to the rim. Good aggressive move on the base on there from Larry Austin. It's all created there from the point guard. Nice finish from Gooden. He is fouled and will go to the line for a bonus free throw. Good play there from Gooden. He attacks the defense before it's set up. And he's found himself a little bit of space there. Not the biggest of players, but creates a gap. And a nice left-hand finish from Gooden. Well, we're three minutes into the contest. Sorry, have yet to attempt a three-point shot. I can't think there's too many games that Lloyd Gardner's team have gone three minutes without firing up a three. <laughs> no, I think you're right, Dan. It's their MO, isn't it? It's what their identity has been all year. And that saying goes, you live by the three, you die by the three. And sorry, Scorchers have definitely done that this season. Mid-range from Green off the mark. Round to Gooden. Still running corner to corner, but Wang going after the offensive rebound off the Jamison miss, but Newcastle come away with it. Here's Austin. Well, he's a little close to Green, but Green's able to finish it. Yeah, space is still not great for no. the Eagles, is it? But it doesn't matter on that occasion. Larry Austin Jr.'s aggression got him into a good, dangerous area in the key and dumped it down to his big man for the finish. Wang in the corner, puts it on the floor, trying to drop it into Jameson, booted out of bounds by Darius Defoe. That'll put 14 seconds back on the shot clock. Great clearance by the sweeper there, just making sure there's <laughs> none of those th through balls. <laughs> well, it's uh, a good day for the footballers from Newcastle. Darius showing his touch. Four goals, I Four heard. goals, yeah. Oh, thrown away right into the hands of Austin. Oh, slip from Green, and he couldn't quite grasp the ball before it goes out of bounds. That'll be a frustrating one for both teams. Two really soft turnovers. The out of bounds there, entry from Gooden, which leads to this one here, just a slip, and oh, unfortunate. Just out of reach for Taj Green. Is Lawrence back to Gooden halfway through the shot clock? Gooden with a little slip as well. He fires up the triple. First made three of the game for Surrey. Goodness me! Off the slip, you see him size up the defender. Nothing but net. McGill trying to get those three points back. Numbers here for Surrey. Wang drops it off to Mohammed, who lays it in there on top. Really like that from Wang there. That little extra dribble got the defense to commit. And Mohammed with a nice finish. Johnson surveying his options. Defoe, six on the shot clock. Double team comes, gets it away. Austin on the offensive glass. Oh, my goodness. Wang went right over the top of him. He's done well not to injure himself there, Padilla He's done Wang. Really well, hasn't he? That can be a 
dangerous play. You see, good rebound here from Olarison Jr. Because Taz Green just timed that all wrong with his rebound. And it's a finesse recovery there it from was very uh, gymnastic, I would say. How do you think you'd feel if you were that athletic that even your falls look at? <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> well, I also like the hustle from Jameson. He was pretty quick in there to try and catch his teammate should he needed uh, a little extra help. But Wang was able to deal with the situation himself. It's always good to have a good, strong spotter. Yeah, just in yeah, case, yeah, though, yeah, Dan, just you know? in case. There's no crash mats out there to land it, dude. <laughs> Austin ties the scores at 12. Nobody missing a free throw so far, and the scores are level at 12 here at the Sports Park. 4.53 left in this first quarter. Timeout is called. We'll take one as well. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Oh my God, now a word or two for the officials before he went into his huddle to uh, talk to his players. He's still having a little uh, chunter. He's virtually on the baseline. But we get things back underway, Lawrence has it. Alley oop towards Wang. That was an ambitious pass. Gooden catches Johnson. One or two rather speculative gestures for an unsportsmanlike foul from the Newcastle bench. No danger of that being called. No, but there is a danger now for Surrey as they flirting with the team fouls. That's the full foul now with close to five minutes to play. And Newcastle so uh, well, doing so well from the free throw line thus far. Is Green missing everything? And Dengby with the rebound. Gooden. Well, nobody stopped the ball. Oh, he missed the layup though. Goodness me, that was awful defense and even worse offense. <laughs> Here's McGill down the lane, scoops it up. That's short. Jameson with the rebound. Ricky McGill just hasn't been able to find his feel in this game so far. Teo shows the young lads how to do it from inside. <laughs> he does indeed, and we both know that was a dunk a couple of years yeah, ago. It was, yeah, yeah. You've got, to, you've got to maintain those knees as long as you can. Well, he's certainly done that. McGill, well, I mentioned that game earlier in the season where Ricky McGill put a monster number on the board here. It was really in the second half that he did it. It was third quarter he caught fire. To forget that 
He had a relatively slow start to that game. Quinn Cooper into the game. I'm sure we'll see a few more threes going up now from Surrey. Just two three-point attempts in the first six minutes. Newcastle have really taken it away from them. Here's Johnson. He knocks down Newcastle's first triple of the game. Oh, great work there from Jordan Johnson. Uses about four and a half seconds to enter that ball and then doesn't stand still, relocates to that corner. Catch and shoot, nice play. Lawrence around the high screen, turns the corner and Delpesh points to the referee and goes, yeah, I got him there. Oh, Newcastle getting more out of Malcolm Delpesh now. He's been someone who's been able to provide additional energy and production from the bench. So you don't want him to, you know, you wouldn't want him to pick up a, another early foul and remove himself from the first half of this game. Steele back into the game. Lawrence now into the key, kicks it out. Ogundengby fakes the three, sets himself, knocks it down. Great work there from Ogundengby. Great use of the pump fake. Taz Green flies by and all the time in the world to knock it down. Whitfield stolen away by Lawrence. Lawrence pushing, kicks it out to Steele. Had to check his feet to make sure he stayed in play. Jameson backing down. Delpesh doing enough to make that difficult. Excellent defense there from Delpesh. Austin straight to the rim and Jameson's on the floor. He's punching the floor, looks in quite a bit of pain here. Well, he's back up to his feet. Well, he seems to seems to look like he might be able to run it off, although the physio has now come to have a word. He just stumbled. It's like he landed on the back of Larry Austin's foot. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe just a little slight tweak of the ankle there. Yeah, it's painful. Well, he has gone off. Oh, it's stolen away by Johnson. Johnson to the rim. And Degby did enough to put him off, but not foul him. Again, another good play from Ogden Denby. Used his size advantage there just to make things difficult for Johnson, who isn't able to finish in the open court. Steele gets it in and gets it right back. Lawrence fires up the three. Lawrence knocks it down. <laughs> well, look, Andrew Lawrence had time there, so you see him measuring up the defender and again lock and load and knocks it down. Spencer trying to get them back. Austin again on the offensive glass. Now to Whitfield for three. That's short. Another offensive rebound. Delpesh this time getting his hands on it. And they'll try again. Whitfield off the mark. Goodness me. No score in those three attempts from the perimeter for Newcastle Eagles. But good energy on the offensive glass. Steele gets into the key. High arcing in for two. And that's given Surrey their biggest lead of the contest at five. And Mark Stuckel going to call for time here. Yeah, it's comfortable looking pull up there for Josh Steele, and that's what he has just because of his ability to shoot the three-point shot and his reputation in the British Basketball League over the last several years has been just that. So players often jump out to him. So if he's got that pull-up jump shot or that extra dribble all the way to the rim, he's going to make himself even more dangerous. Okay. We can't get them easy transition points, man. Switches inside the line, nothing in transition, that's the game. 
Well, a lot of talk there about uh, personnel, really, at the beginning, wasn't it? It's uh, Gooden and Lawrence, and you can see they've lost three of their last four coming into this. Just that away win at Leicester, which they did well in the second half to avoid making that four losses in a row, didn't they? Oh, you're right, Dan. You know, if you, you're right, you know, like, they could be looking at a, a four-loss a four loss record there. Sorry, likewise. Uh, just the one win for the last four games. That was away at Manchester. But a bright start for the Scorchers here. Slap down by Lawrence. Punish for a foul. And there's the two free throws you were talking about earlier. They, I guess they went three or four minutes before they got that fifth. Yeah, they did, and Andrew Lawrence knows that was a, a bad foul. And look, it's been the brighter start from Surrey, but both teams are making errors, and, you know, it, it's very typical of teams in these losing slumps to to, to be making these, these errors, hence why they're in losing slumps. So it's just a case sometimes of just which club has made more intelligent plays than the other. Well, that is the first missed free throw of the ball game. The two teams had combined for 10 of 10 before that. Cooper trying to hand it off his Teo, and he gets it back to Lawrence. Lawrence out to Cooper, resets for three. Quinn Cooper on the shot clock buzzer. Wow, just in the nick of time. It's Quinn Cooper, and that's exactly what he wants to do, is shoot that three ball. 25-18 well, is the uh, score at the moment with the last 30 seconds of this quarter. And uh, rebound is a hell ball. So the possession arrow will go the way of Surrey. Apologies for the uh, issue with our clock at the moment. There's uh, 28 seconds remaining, and uh, it is 25-18 in favor of the Scorchers and a chance to, well, maybe even push it to 10 here. Cooper gives it back to Lawrence. Shot clock into single figures. Cooper's going to let it fly again. Back-to-back -back threes for Quinn Cooper. Goodness me, it's a deep one, but it's a good-looking shot for him. Again, that's a personnel one, isn't it? Is uh, McGill driving in? That won't count. It'll be two free throws. Coach Stoodle was talking about knowing the personnel in the uh, timeout. And... The one thing you know is there's no limit to the range of Cooper, and if the last one went in, the next one is going up. Yeah, you've just got to be that little bit sharper on defense and just know that's what he wanted to do, first and foremost. But instead, it's uh, Johnson way too far uh, too far away, excuse me, from Quinn Cooper. And even on this other end as well, Dan, you know, all Surrey scorers just have to do is they stay solid for four or five more five seconds here on, on defense, but instead they commit a foul. And Ricky McGill's going to be able to have an opportunity here to close it to eight. He misses it, and that will do it for the first quarter. Well, Surrey took their time to get some three-point shots up, but they made five in that quarter in the end. And that is why they lead here at the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back with the second quarter after this.
Welcome back to Surrey, where the Scorchers were five of six from behind the arc. Quinn Cooper hitting the last two of them. And that is why they lead 28 points to 19 here. Newcastle with the possession arrow to start the second quarter. Delpesh spinning and pulling the rim down. Great move there from Malcolm Delpesh. He felt the defender on his hip span baseline and used his size and athleticism there to dunk it home. Lawrence uses the screen, and that's a legal screen. Bailey just smashing Whitfield to the floor. And this will be a, an early test here for Surrey Scorchers in the early stages of the second call. Great move there, there. Perfectly timed spin from Del Pesce and finish. But Surrey Scorchers, you know, after that, that high elation of having a good first quarter, you've got to sort of realign your, your expectations now and play a little bit of damage li limitation as the team chasing will come at you. Well, Depos trying to take advantage of that matchup again down low. This time he's crowded out of it and a technical foul has been called on the uh, run back. It's on uh, Ricky McGill, I believe. It's going to be his second personal foul. Gwen Cooper, the designated free throw shooter for uh, Surrey, and that is why. Because he's uh, an 85% free throw shooter. Just watch Ricky McGill. He's right in front of the referee now. I think he's having a word about whether there was a foul in there. And well, there's a scout report, isn't there, on all the players. There's also a scout report on the <laughs> referees as well. Keith Williams is not the guy to be moaning out like that in the open court. There's only one outcome coming. No, I, I knew exactly what you were going to say before you finished the sentence. I could have told you the same scout report 10 years ago. Oh, that's going to be an unsportsmanlike oh, foul. Me. He's grabbed him as he fell on top of him. And that's too much aggression. That's another play you can't make in today's game. Well, it looks like he's hurt himself and might be a case of him as well, just trying to grab something as he was falling to the floor. Well, again, you're allowed, obviously, you're allowed to uh, try and block the shot and land him, but it's the two arms going round that has uh, caused for the foul. And then because he's done that, it's gone, it looked like head to head there. And he's come off worse as a result. I think he's counting, he's got all his teeth at the minute. Yeah, it's not a, a good sequence of events there for Bailey. Picking up a foul and getting hurt in the proceeds. Well, there's a lot of discussion going on all around the court, players and coaches. But I don't think the referees have any choice but to call an unsportsmanlike on that one. So Jordan Johnson will shoot two. Newcastle have got to the line regularly here in the early stages. That's free throw number 11. This will be number 12. And that's what they do really well at Dan. They've got players. So dynamic, Jordan Johnson, Larry Austin, Ricky McGill, players that attack from the wings using the dribble. They're second in the league this year at free throw attempts per game, only behind London Lions who are top of the British Basketball League. Johnson looking down low, Telpesh gives it back to his point guard. Round it goes to McGill along the baseline, shot clock getting low, needs to go up. Johnson got it away in time, couldn't convert. Lawrence with the rebound. Did he get it over? No, he didn't. You can see he was aiming it for Cooper, but Jordan Johnson just got back and got his hands on that. He's done so well there, Jordan Johnson, defensively. Firstly, to get back in transition defense, but secondly, to be able to catch that and recoup the ball. Johnson high up off the glass. So good, and he makes it look so easy. That first step of his is so quick, and that dribble 
really does extend his travel there towards the the rim. Scorch's 10-point lead is down to six. Cooper has the room, looking for a third. Gets a friendly bounce, and he is three of three. Goodness me. Get the ball in his hands in those positions, and he'll do the rest. Breathe the three now. For Quinn Cooper. Well, you can see he didn't quite have enough on it, but just got the bounce off the front of the rim and in. And he's got 10 points already. He's only taken three field goals. He's got 10 points. And the technical free throw, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what he got. You only ever get those technical free throws if you're known as a shooter. Yeah, too. yeah. Did you ever in your entire no, career? No, I did not no. ever shoot a Didn't think so. Yeah, free your, throw. your career was known as shooting from the shooting from the free throw line, yeah, basically. Yeah. Like in in in, in live play, in live play <laughs> not not necessarily uh, for your free throw shooting, but that's what you did. You never once got a technical well, free I needed, throw. I needed to feel that a defender flying at me. That's yeah, what that's what I did. That's on the free throw is, line. It was yeah, just way yeah. too way too quiet. Way, way too, too quiet. Too, yeah, too many uh, too many open looks for you on the that's free it. throw line. That's, that's it. what it is. Well, Surrey Scorchers with a nine point lead here, two and a half minutes into this second quarter. Newcastle trying to eat into that. Green misses the first shot. It's back out to Whitfield. Another offensive rebound. They've really crashed the boards hard. Newcastle, they're still doing it. And eventually, Surrey get their hands on the ball. Their energy has been great on the offensive glass. They just haven't been able to capitalize on those chances. Again, three, four missed opportunities there to convert points on the second, third, fourth chance opportunities. Oh, a bit of a slap down at the ball. Whitfield hogging his case. I think it was the right call. Might have been half a second late, but it uh, was definitely a foul. Has checked in alongside Wang. He's another one that we've seen knock down some three-point shots in the uh, early stages of his British Basketball League career. No, certainly have, and it's great that a player who was developed in the UK through the Larkin Abbey program is able to come back now and play professionally on British soil. Started with the Baltic Stars. Did go to Ritas uh, in Lithuania briefly. In the corner is Green. A little touch pass. Nice attack of the basket. The foul is scored as well. Whitfield will get the two and one. Look, it results in a potential three-point play here for the Newcastle Eagles, but I really like the energy on the defensive end from Surrey Scorchers. Excellent at closing out that last one. That was a little bit too aggressive. He really tried to run Whitfield off the line, which he did, but Whitfield was good enough there to find a, a lane all the way to the basket. Lobbed up to Jameson, who jams it in. Wow, easy as they come. Jameson ran the floor, found space on the baseline. Great lob pass there from Mohammed. It's back to 10. Another off it. No, it's not. Wang gets there first. Novinsko is running the wall. What a no, it's a foul. Foul is called. Thought Whitfield had got a big block on the board there, but the whistle goes. Wow, it looked like a. A good one from up top, didn't it? It's a lot of contact on the body, isn't it? Yeah, there is, yeah. Oh, this is the play before Muhammad just dribbling in the key there, which gets the defense to attract to him, which leaves space for his big man to dunk the alley-oop. Biggest lead of the... Uh contest so far for Surrey has been 11. They've matched that now. Looking to stretch it to 12. Shonovinskas doing exactly that. And, uh, 
Sorry. Well, if they could come down with uh, single shot possessions, sorry, they would be perhaps further ahead. Newcastle have been crashing the glass. McGill, he's got to fire up the three. That misses everything. Knocked away from Delpesh. Gooden running. And a slap down by Johnson and Newcastle at the minute really struggling at the offensive end. Yeah, I don't can't remember the last time I've seen Newcastle look this out of sync. Well, on Thursday night I saw them out of sync <laughs> in the, the fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. <laughs> uh, but this is a, a prolonged period of time here. And look, Newcastle have to figure out a way or increase a sense of urgency because at this moment in time, they just cannot figure out a way to collectively work as a group offensively and it's not beyond the effort you know we've seen the multiple gang rebounds on the offensive end but just cannot make a shot and the quality of shots aren't good either that last shot there from Ricky McGill as talented as he is it's an awful shot shot clock winding down heavily contested Mark Stewart's got some They've got to find a way of getting the ball in the basket. It's 59% to 27% in the field goal shooting. And, you know, you're, you're going to be way down in a game if the other team is shooting 30 percentage points better than you. Yeah, for sure. And what Surrey do not want to do is let this Newcastle Eagles team get to the free throw line because that's where they're not suffering any woes. 11 for 13 from the, fr from the free throw line, healthy 84%. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? That's point number 12 uh, from the free throw line. So only 17 points from uh, open play for Mark Stutel's team. 17 points in 16 minutes. It's not enough. No, it's not, especially when you've got the individuals you've got on the team. And even to rub salt on the wounds there, Jordan Johnson misses a free throw. Good. Down low to Jameson, who has the mismatch. Teo is open on the far side. That's short. Wang with the offensive rebound, though. And that was a little slap on the wrist from Taj Green. Good work there for Paddy at Wang. Just to be able to scramble to get that rebound. Again, it's Teo can with a relatively good-looking shot. The other thing about it, going back to the field goal shooting percentages, that is the uh, third offensive rebound that Surrey have got in this game. And yet, uh, they, they've got a chance here to have as many second chance points as Newcastle have, because Newcastle have only got two second chance points from their seven offensive rebounds. Wow. Yeah, that's a... That's a, you know, a glaring statistic there. And again, it goes back to the... Original point, and that's Newcastle Eagles have to figure out a way to convert. Jordan Johnson has 10 points personal. There's no one really else that's close to him on those numbers. 44 points against as well is a lot in 15 minutes. Yes. Partly because of the excellent three-point shooting in the uh, later stages of the first quarter by Surrey. When a team shoots that well from the three-point line, though, it's you can give credit, obviously, to the offensive players for, for hitting shots, but it's also the breakdown of, of the defense that are giving them good quality looks. Darius Defoe bailing his team out there with his trusty mid-range jump shot. And Dengby driving in. Too strong, but there's some more second chance points for the Scorchers as Jameson forces it back home and Surrey stretching their lead. Newcastle work to do here. They've called for a timeout. We'll take a break as well. We'll be back after this.
Welcome back to the sports park where all the seats are taken and the fans are very happy because their team lead by 15 here midway through the second quarter. Defoe out to McGill. McGill who struggled with his shooting so far gets a friendly roll. He'd been 0 for 5 before that one went in. That's the friendliest of rolls down but Credit to him, he was ready as soon as he caught that ball. Relatively good contest there as well from the Surrey defense. But he's a good scorer, hard to stop. Wang, a little hesitation, high off the glass, too strong. Jameson with the offensive rebound. Here's Wang underneath. Wang through the contact is able to lay it home. Great finish, and there you go, another two point second chance. And this is the problem that Eagles are going to have now. Jameson is one of the best offensive rebounders in the league, and he's going to be able to generate extra offenses for his team. Well, you can see the difference in the second chance conversion. And that's going to be another foul. Is there a goaltend on that as well? The bench is up saying that maybe there should be two points given. You can see Josh Steele making the signal to say basket good. Did look like somebody pulled the net. Of course, the ball has to have a chance of going in. Let's have another look at this. Shot goes up. There's a slap of the board. I don't think the ball's got a chance of going in. That's the problem. It's definitely uh, basket interference, but it didn't look like it, it. It sort of hit the backboard and went over the other side of the ring. I'm assuming that was the decision that the officials came to as well. Once again at the free throw line. He's 3-3 three three so far. Yeah, I mean, Chauvinskis has done well. He's came in. He's got stuck in. He's perfect from the free throw line. Well, the one thing I would say, in the minutes that we've seen him play this year, he doesn't look out of place, no, does he? He looks no. like he, he's 18 years of age. He's he looks right at 18, the beginning. But he, he looks, looks 18, but he doesn't, doesn't look, look out like he's yeah. out of place on the court. Agreed. Definitely a bright prospect for the future, the GB under 18 international. Here's Defoe. Defoe, whose professional career started before he was born, by the way. <laughs> Crazy dust. <laughs> a little too much aggression there from Larry Austin. Can't do that, Dan. You're chasing a game, and again, a foolish foul. So far away from the basket. Just not smart plays. Still three minutes to go to halftime. So he already passed the half century mark. Well, sorry, I just on fire from the three throw line. That's 15 for 15 now for the Scorchers as well as their very healthy six for eight from the three-point line. It's the worst of all worlds, isn't it, that? They're making threes and they get to the free throw line. Usually those two things are not entirely compatible. No, if you're no. shooting threes, you don't get to the free throw line. You yep. don't get fouled, but they're doing both. A long time for Whitfield to stare that one down. Three much needed points for the Newcastle Eagles. Yeah, way too long. It was lost there. Travel. Yeah. A little jump of the ball from uh, Okasiemi. Well. They're only down 12 here, Newcastle. I think if they can get to halftime, single figures, a chance to regroup and maybe change things up a little defensively. No, and especially the, the way that, the rate that Surrey Scorch have been shooting the ball, you'd be happy, wouldn't you, to be down single digits? That one rims out. Another offensive rebound, knocked out of play. It'll stay with the Newcastle Eagles. Larry Austin Jr., he just... Just amuses me how really great he is at rebound. He's six foot two, six three, but he plays so much bigger. Oh, here he is, wide open underneath and lays it in. 
Perfectly timed cut there. I don't think sorry Scorch has uh, got that same level of intensity on the defensive end as they did in the first quarter. And that can come to bite them in the behind if Newcastle continue to close this gap. Cooper has the space, they flushed him off the three, tried to get it to Jameson, shot clock, needs to go up. Lawrence with the heave. And will Surrey get it back? Did that bounce? No, it didn't. It went straight out of bounds off Lawrence. Just wondered if it might have ricocheted off Whitfield on the way out. Well, Newcastle with the two bigs on court at the minute. Here's McGill. Short on that one. Two bigs on the court, and it's still Larry Austin getting the offensive rebound. Incredible. Incredible. Little plays like that being the difference. And you're right, Dan. This unit for the Eagles is quite unique at the moment. Two bigs on. No Jordan Johnson as well. Often you don't see that a lot. Jordan Johnson playing someone who plays heavy minutes, orchestrates the offense. Nice pass. Oh, and jammed in by Delpesh. Wow. That was a phenomenal pass on the money, and Delpesh collects that one and jams it home. All right, it's down to eight with a minute to go in the second quarter. Seven in a row now for the Newcastle Eagles. Sorry, need a response. Wang trying to provide it. All tipped by uh, Jameson, but not forced home. McGill stripped, gets it back. Tough shot, knocks it down. Goodness me, he's done so well there. You know where he was trying to get to, he's trying to get into the middle of the paint there. Almost got it stolen, recouped the ball. Nice turnaround jump shot. And stolen away by Defoe. And what a finish to the half this is from the Newcastle Eagles. They're in a world of trouble two minutes ago. But <laughs> suddenly they can cut it down, maybe even to a one-shot game here. McGill's going to try and do that. Short on the three. Time for Surrey. Jameson needs to be quick, though. He's not really the guy who normally does this. But he drives, he kicks, and Wang doesn't quite go for three. Well, that was a half that was bossed by the Surrey Scorchers for almost all of it. But their lead has uh, diminished in the last couple of minutes. Newcastle making a bit of a recovery. We will go through all that has happened in the first half right after this break.
Welcome back to our coverage of the British Basketball League, where Surrey were dominating this game. They were 51 uh, to 35 ahead, and then suddenly it all the wheels came off for them, and Newcastle making a run at the end. Just mayhem, Dan. Absolute mayhem out there, and you, you felt that. Uh, Surrey had complete control of this game. They had good energy on both ends of the floor. Newcastle, on the other hand, just looked lost at times offensively. They didn't really were getting good shots, and, and even though they were, their effort was there, crashing the offensive boards, they just couldn't they couldn't put the ball in the hole and then they finished the half by doing exactly that and in some ways the numbers are kind of mask what's happened in this game don't they <laughs> they certainly have and it's been the red hot shoot in there from the surrey scorchers uh, that that's really put uh, pressure on the newcastle eagles and if it's not the shooting as well as their ability to get to the free throw line you know they're they've been near perfect 93 percent on the free throw line so really difficult task for newcastle eagles but excellent response from them on the offensive end and only two turnovers as well from the eagles let's have a look back at the action from the first half here at Surrey Sports Park. And, uh, well, it started really nicely as far as uh, Surrey were concerned, but it started in an unusual way, them going to two-point shots rather than their usual threes. Yeah, I mean, you know, you commented on this, and it was only a matter of time before they started getting their three-point shots up. And what they've done today, though, has been quality over quantity, and they've got some really good looks. You know, you take away that, that last um, heave there before the end of the, the clock as well. They've looked at some really quality. I thought Ogden did really well for them off the bench today. He hit a big three, but also putting the basketball in the hole. And Newcastle were... Well, we've got, obviously, when you look back at the highlights, you see all the scores. What you don't see is all the missed shots <laughs> that the Eagles had uh, early on in this contest. And, well, I think they'll be delighted that they've uh, cut this one back down to six. But they will they talked in the timeout, knowing your personnel, finding the shooters. Cooper was definitely one of those. Well, they didn't locate Cooper, and that's been... They're down four because he's got 10 points personally at halftime and he's had three threes. But Surrey just done a good job. You know, it's been a good distribution. Quinn Cooper's the leading scorer at 10 points, but they've got good contributions all across the board from everyone who's touched the floor in the Surrey Scorchers jersey. I guess the the halftime for Surrey is that balance between frustration that we're only up six and being happy to be up six. Yeah, I agreed. I think that's Coach Lloyd Gardner's task here now. And they did let it slipped in the second quarter. It was a mental breakdown. And I thought their intensity on the defensive end slipped as well. And, and what you do in that instance, you get a guy like Ricky McGill confidence, he is going to hurt you. Oh, he certainly is. Well, in a few moments' time, we're going to have some quick-fire questions with the Newcastle Eagles. But first, let's have a look back at their game against Bristol on Thursday night. Here's Johnson. Steps back top of the key. Oh, oh tough <laughs> shot from JJ. Levi Bradley. Too much needed points, but splash three for Taj Green. It's at this end of the floor that Bristol are struggling. Can Bradley get to? Not quite. Out to Orlison, lines up the triple, splashes out. They needed it. Wasting no time. Austin knocking it loose, running the floor. That's what he does so effectively. Kick forward. Well, they had numbers for a moment. Here's Keedy Johnson taking it hard to the rim through the contact. That basket will count. Nice follow and jammed in. There's Johnson again. A word or two for the Eagles defenders. Newcastle trying to pressure them. Well, they didn't get out to Ollison quick enough, and that's his third three-pointer of the game. Green keeps the ball for himself, drives along, kicks to Johnson in the corner. Jordan Johnson hits his second three of the game. Jordan Johnson driving hard to the hole. That drops. Oh, it's incredible. There he is again, taking it right into the chest. It's the lack of movement. The lack of movement. That's, that's the problem I have. Great shot. Okay, Tio, what do I know? Here on that right side. Well, Del Pesh in the corner. Pedrillo! Oh, my banked goodness! It. He has banked it. Big time shot. Gill was too far under there. And it's run back and laid in. Tough. And out of nowhere, Bristol have tied the scores. Austin gets the rebound. It has to go up here. Defoe needs to shoot. It gets it away in time. And Darius Defoe beats the buzzer. 
Oh, Johnson creates some space for the three, and he knocks That's it down. Time. Johnson driving in, bump foul. Oh, what a finish! Holy Katie moly. Johnson. But a great comeback from the Bristol Flyers with a monster fourth quarter. They scored 37 points in the last 10 minutes. Quick fire questions with the Newcastle Eagles. <laughs> Who's the best dancer? Who has the moves? Devon? Oh my gosh. You've got to show us some. Hey, hey, woo. Most likely to forget a play. Oh, out of order. Devon again? You're going to forget the offense? Defense or offense? Larry, where are you going? Defense? Ooh, Ricky. And Josh Ward Hibbert loves defense. Who's Mr. Smooth? I think Dad, because he, he got, like, got that the accent. He got, got that country, country accent. accent. Got they the, like that. Oh, they yeah. like that. I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Most likely to never get married. Who's putting a ring on it? I got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she, know she is. <laughs> Three pointer or a dunk? Flying high. Larry Austin Jr. with the dunk. Hey. Ricky with the three pointer and Josh Ward Hibbert. Woo! It's gonna be a dunker. Who's got the best drip? I'll tell you this for free. Josh. I'm uh, not even. <laughs> Always swaggy. Outfit after outfit. Hey, we come as a unit, guys, and we all compliment each other. We all got our hoodies. Look what he got. <laughs> are you a passer or are you a scorer? Devin, Larry, Ricky, where you going? Josh Ward Hibbert, he can't believe it. He's a passer, nah. All right, passer he is. Most likely to be on Love Island. Who's the lover boy? Josh. Is that the one with the, they, they can't see they date? Nah, you they... see what I'm saying? He nah, has to be hard on him. <laughs> you score five points and your team wins. You score 50, but your team loses. Larry Austin Jr., where you going? No, get back over here. Good job, Josh. It's all about the win. Good job. Love to see it. Yeah.
Welcome back to our coverage of the British Basketball League, where Surrey are on top of Newcastle, but only by six at halftime. Daniel Routledge and Ant Rowe with you. Let's uh, remind ourselves of the results so far this week in the British Basketball League. Big win for Cheshire on Wednesday. Newcastle let it slip in the fourth quarter. Bristol coming from behind to win by four. Last night, there were big wins on the road for the London Lions at Plymouth and a great home win for the Sheffield Sharks against Caledonia. Doubleheader today coming up at 8 o'clock. We've got Bristol against Manchester in two more games tomorrow. Sheffield, Cheshire and Caledonia against Plymouth. Well, I'll let you into a little secret. In the world of television, what we do is we clip together some uh, highlights to give you about three or four minutes before halftime, which at the time made sense to be sorry three-pointers. We could have clipped up the last three minutes and gone the other way, but it was the threes of Surrey early on that did the damage, And That was, and that's what ignited their offense. And what it does is, as well, it increases your confidence. They were getting good looks, and you know, they weren't heavily contested, as you can see here. And the ones that were, you know, the confidence was really high. So they're, those are the ones that are easy to knock down. Well, you talked about it in commentary. They're normally volume three-point shooters, only nine attempts. But if you're going to make six of them, you're going to be in a good spot. And they are. They're in a good spot. They'll be, of course, they'll be, I think, disappointed with how they weren't able to close up that second quarter and, and maintaining a double-digit lead. But what they uh, will be happy with is, is their production. You know, a good 51 points at, at halftime. That's a, you know, it's a, it's a small victory within itself. The problem for them is they had 51 points at the 17-minute mark as well. They didn't score for the last three minutes. Newcastle with a 9-0 finish, which is why this one is back in the balance. But if you're Lloyd Gardner, you say, well, we just go out and do what we did in the first half. We start the way we started that first quarter. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, as the game goes on, you know, we've seen enough basketball games over the years to know that it's all about momentum. And... That's what Coach Lord Gardner would want to be doing, is making sure that his team understands that, OK, there was a little lull there in our performance in the end of that second quarter, but this is we're in a really posi good position here now to win this basketball game. Well, they are the ones who will start with possession of the ball in the uh, second half. And it is Wang up top to Gooden. Gooden awaits the screen. Spins to the middle. Jameson's kind of in the way there, but Gooden is able to convert. Wow, tough play. And Gooden, he's really good when he gets to those spots, those danger areas. He's not the tallest of players, but he certainly scored the ball. He's a prolific scorer in college for Utah. And it's his first year as a pro, and he's had those sort of rookie games at highs and the lows. Defoe, short on his uh, trusty long elbow shot. Mohammed running into trouble and being called for a traveling violation as a result. Yeah, Jordan Johnson's done really well there. Really poor defense, though, from Taj Green. You see the run out there was very casual, and then he didn't work particularly hard to get back in the play, but he was bailed out there from his point guard, Jordan Johnson, who was in good position in there, hands straight up, and gets the Mohammed to commit a turnover. Gill. Green at the offensive end. Johnson rims out for three. Well, the thing as well, Dan, is that run was you know, inspired by the players on court. Jordan Johnson was on the bench resting during that 9-0 run at the end of the second quarter, which is, again, quite a rare instance that you'll see on this Eagles team. Mohammed with an offensive rebound. Johnson is actually a minus nine on the plus minus. Driving in is Cam Gooden. He wanted a foul. Can't convert. Austin going coast to coast, but Steele denies him. Good play from Josh Steele. That's not the first time Josh Steele's made a, a good play on the defensive end, just being disciplined and having good positioning. Gooden has the switch with the foe. Throws it away, though. Newcastle with numbers. Oh, good work from Wang. And that will go out of bounds for a Newcastle possession. Well, it looked like it was going to be an easy score, but Wang did enough. Incredible play by Wang. I mean, look, 
I don't know how much he knew about it coming off his, his heel, but he was there. And what he's done is he's prevented an easy two for the Newcastle Eagles, who have struggled at times to put the ball in the hole. Green's going to take a three. And, well, he's saved two points for his team there. Yep. Steal down to uh, Jameson, who went maybe a little quicker than he needed to, but he got the points. That's all that matters. And suddenly it's back out to 10. Yep. And Josh Steele playing like a guy who's played in this league for several years. His experience really shining through now, both ends of the floor. Good pass down low there to Jameson. McGill fouled from behind by Gooden. It looked like a foul to me, but he is adamant that uh, it wasn't. Unless he's arguing that Defoe moved on the screen, perhaps. Not sure. Let's have another look. He's reached round. Oh, he's saying Defoe backed into him and knocked him. Uh, you reach round. Oh, Steele has hit the deck. McGill. Shot clock down to six. Johnson off the three-point line into the key and dropping it in. Nice controlled decision there from Jordan Johnson. He gave up the three-point shot, which was going to be contested. He got himself a nice, easy pull-up jump shot. Let's close the gap to eight. Mohamed fires up the triple, front iron on that. His first miss of the game, and he's not really shot the ball though. His uh, green in close, but he can't convert. He's batted out by Wang. Johnson snaffles the loose possession. McGill drops it off. Somehow Gooden comes away with it. Gooden will take it alone, and he'll get the bounce. That's a tough finish there from Gooden. <laughs> wow. 12 points now for Cameron Gooden. Johnson drives and kicks and stepped on the line, Taj Green. You can see Mohamed pun punching the air on a defensive stop. Well, Eagles have got a significant size advantage of playing Defoe and Taj Green at the same time, but they're not able to utilize that. And this is the play before Cam Gooden just goes right at the defense. Ricky McGill did an excellent job there as well. You saw him sprinting back, but Cam Gooden, 12 points leading his team now in scoring. Lawrence. His pass is broken up by McGill, but it comes back to Lawrence. Maybe go up with that one rather than trying to feed Jameson. Yeah, it's one of those offenses that was doomed uh, two near turnovers, and which eventually resulted in a turnover. Defoe moves it on to Austin, and couldn't keep his arms up there, could he? Jameson kept one straight up, but the other one had a nibble down at the ball. Austin's so good in there for someone who's 6'2". He plays so much bigger than he really is. Newcastle with just two points to show for this opening quarter. Les banging the drum there, trying to get his team going. Wherever the Eagles go, you'll find Les. <laughs> it's worrying signs, though. Three points and it's not just under five minutes of play. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not exactly running away with it with six, but... <laughs> Points at a premium here in the third quarter. Johnson pushing, and that's what Johnson does. He puts you under pressure to foul him and get himself to the free throw line. What I will say though about this half so far, there's a level of intensity here that's increased from both teams. You see the, I don't know, the element of desperation they're increasing and therefore the intensity as well. It's fun to watch.
Johnson misses the first free throw. And these are points that you you rely on him to, to score 84% free throw shooter. Well, over the course of the season, the third quarter is Newcastle's best by points average. Great block by Delpesh. They average 23 points a game in the third quarter. But uh, struggling to get that going here today. Surrey still on top in this one, despite this uh, block by Delpesh. A timeout has been called. We'll take a break as well. We'll be right back. Welcome back to uh, Surrey, where Jordan Johnson is the only player in double figures for the Newcastle Eagles. Cooper gets one away, and that is what making those early threes does. It makes you close out even harder against him, and uh, too hard from Johnson there. Yeah, it's not great. He was all in the landing space there, which is a, an illegal play. So Cooper will shoot three free throws. We're trying to re-establish a double figure lead for Cooper. They've done well here in this quarter just to uh, re-establish themselves a bit of a cushion johnson delpesh in close tosses it in great play there delpesh he looks sharp today Nice catch and finish from him there. Steele circles back out. Lawrence, shot clock down to six. Steele fakes the three, takes the three, and he hits. Wow, it's a big play from Josh Steele. It was good defense as well. There he is again, that man, Jordan Johnson, putting the defense under pressure. And even on a made score, he's quick down the floor. But this is a great shot from Steele. Wow. Even Larry Austin Jr. got over there to him, but 
it didn't matter. And this is the play before, as you say, Dan, he's excellent at that, Jordan Johnson. is make or miss, he pushes the basketball, even for himself or his teammates. And that's why Newcastle Eagles have been so good in fast break points this year. They lead the league in fast break points per game, 19 points per game. And he's a main reason for that. Well, he's normally a very good free throw shooter, but he's missed a few today. Newcastle have missed six in total. Lawrence driving in round to Hogan Dengby through the hands of Bailey. And that's going to be an unsportsmanlike. I think the original arm across is okay, but it's the wraparound afterwards yeah. that leaves the referee with very little choice but to call an unsportsmanlike foul. So have another look at, uh, it's Quinn Cooper, number 27. You can see the reach, maybe that's okay, but coming round the back makes it look like a grab and therefore brings into play that unsportsmanlike rule. Because he's not the last man, he's all right reaching. Mm -hmm. But when the second arm comes round, then it's a deliberate attempt to stop the fast break. And that's essentially what they changed the rule for. It's an odd turnover as well. I didn't really know where Akademi was trying to go with it. Cooper tried to catch the basketball, but all that did was just deflect it in the, to the possession of the Eagles. Still a nine-point deficit for Newcastle. Poked away by Lawrence. Wow, he's done really well there, Lawrence. Oh, nice, Josh Steele. Everything but the finish, though. Yeah, great footwork. Josh Steele's got good size as well. We've known him as a, a shooter, but he's a good 6-4. Oh, there he is, blocking a shot as well. <laughs> McGill trying to force one up. Delpesh has it. And still they can't get it to go. Oh, they've... It's called a backcourt violation there. It's gone from uh, Johnson to Delpesh. And the only thing is whether that's a slap. You know, on the offensive rebounds, you're allowed to tip it into the backcourt. But I think he's arguing about a foul. Let's have another look. Delpesh has come up with the ball. He can't convert. And then, oh, it's a sneaky little steal. I guess that is deliberate. Push back. Steel, shot clock's low. There's a equivalent steal from Ricky McGill. McGill's going to step into the three. Off the mark. Defoe on the offensive glass, trying to force it home. And he will get two shots. And the Scorchers players were thinking there might have been an offensive foul there. Two veterans going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Reminiscent of 2010, Dan. <laughs> well, Terry's going to the line, Teo, trying to get an explanation. You've had one or two of them as well. If we're going back to 2010, you'd have been involved in a few yeah. of those fouls as well. Yeah, it's good to see. Some of the, the long, the, long the, the, the players with the longevity are still going. Oh, Teo, uh, he's been a, not quite as long as uh, Darius has. I think 2006 7 was the first year he played in the British Basketball League. And London. they both evolved their games yeah, as yeah. well. You know, both were. Teo was an athlete, yeah, wasn't he? Both well, were. Darius yeah. was as well, to be fair. Darius was a brute strength athlete, and, um, you know, both evolved their games. They, they were. Darius in particular, he'd always had a good basketball IQ, um, but Teo is someone who's has evolved as well. His jump shot is so much more consistent. His knowledge of the game has increased as well. It's it's uh, it's a reason why they've been able to stay around for as long as they, they have, because their games have evolved. Is that Johnson still going? So if the knees hadn't let you down, Am, would you still be going? Well, I think I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to think so, but I mean, I was I was given signs, wasn't I? Three knee surgeries <laughs> would suggest it was time for me to to clock out. Lawrence uh, fouled from uh, Whitfield. 
And just like that, five-point game. That's what Newcastle do have. They have the explosive players to be able to get you in a game in a hurry. You know, two minutes here now going into this fourth and final quarter. Eagles are want to dig deep now and put pressure on Surrey as they finish this quarter. Well, they need some points, and that one hits the net, but only the front side of it and out of bounds. Surrey have hit the struggles again. It was 63 to 52 just a few moments ago, but just like at the end of the second quarter, Newcastle putting a run together. McGill needs to get the shot away, throws it out to Defoe, who doesn't quite beat the buzzer. It went in as well. That's an important shot clock violation for Surrey. It really is. It took a lot of time off the clock, and the defense was stubborn enough not to allow anything inside there for the Eagles. It's been a stubborn core, Dan. It's 13 to 12. Oh. My God, no coaching hard on the sidelines. He's seen a lot. Uh, coaching this team this year, I think. He's seen other teams come back a few times as well. That's what he's trying to avoid here. Ogden Denby gets his own rebound. It's knocked away. I think that touched Bailey, and he couldn't quite keep it in play. But you, do, you under, do you feel it too? It's like an erratic, uh, high intense feel to the game. It's, I don't know if they've got the memo. The playoffs haven't started yet, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Well, they uh, both have got their, their flaws on display, I think it's fair to say, but <laughs> also their strengths. Yeah, look, this isn't without error. There's, there's been more errors from both teams, but what you can't fault is the intensity. Look at that. Andrew Lawrence just denying the, the ball there, so. Jordan it's going to be a foul, Offensive yeah. foul for Del Pesh pushing the back by the looks of it. Yeah, it's one of those things that you watch that play and, and you may not notice the fact that Austin only went there because he was trying to get the ball to Johnson. Johnson couldn't get the ball because Lawrence was playing the D. Speaking of veteran guys yep. who battled through injuries, he's still running hard here in this game. Wang. No way past Austin. Now Lawrence is way away from the basket, has to shoot. Ogan Dengby with the rebound block by Delpesh. Wang has it. Lawrence into the key and finally gets the scoreboard ticking for Surrey. Wow, good persistence there from the Scorchers. Well, point number 63 came four minutes ago. <laughs> it's not loose. Time running out, Johnson backs away for three. And Surrey secure the ball. Well, they built a double-figure lead once again, but Newcastle will not go away. The fourth quarter to decide the winner right after this break.
Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park, where Surrey went four minutes without a score. They needed that one from Andrew Lawrence to end the uh, third quarter, push their lead back to seven. I guess the upside is four minutes without scoring, but the other team only scored seven in that time. Yeah, if you're not going to score the basketball, make sure you're having an impact on the defensive end, and that's exactly what they did, just 13 points in that quarter for Newcastle Eagles. Surrey ended up winning it 14-13, bizarrely. Didn't feel like that watching it. Nice pass. Oh, nearly jammed home by Delpesh, but it's probably a good foul there from Teo Ogundegbi. Yeah, really it's an good an automatic foul. dunk, and he's not an automatic free throw shooter. <laughs> no, he's not. And uh, just to put this the good penetration here, look, from Jordan Johnson and oh, this one Del Petra should finish really. Those are those ones as a, as a big guy you like those, you like feeling the contact. And those are the ones that are on one material and Del Petra already missing the first one. Well, there's a little nod of the head to Teo. As if to say, yeah, that was a good foul, really good foul. Because he gets 0 for 2. And that just compounds the frustration, I think, when you're a team who's just not scoring the ball well. Just to put this in context, Newcastle Eagles 58 points so far in this game. They average over 90 points per game, so they're well below their usual production on the offensive end. And it showed it. They've looked, you know, not in sync today offensively. Oh, Lawrence through the contact with one on the shot clock. A uh, big bucket to end the third, and uh, even more priceless one here at the start of the fourth. Two. Key plays here from the veteran Andrew Lawrence. Good use of the pump fake, then the step through. And then he's got the strength to absorb the contact and make the play. And suddenly, it's back to 10. Those five points from Lawrence either side of the quarter break. Giving Surrey a little cushion again. The drive and kick, Whitfield relocates for three, and he hits. He's done really well there, Whitfield, because it wasn't a good pass. He had to jump to collect it. But nice pump fake and sidestep. And Dengby, two bodies near him in the low post. Sholovinska is open for three, rims out. Austin. Drops it off to Defoe, who gets up for the throwdown. Wow! 38 years young and still running the floor and dunking it. That's why they're so good in transition, Newcastle Eagles. And when you're a team who struggle to score the ball in the half court, those are the points you've got to capitalize on, those, those fast break points. And Larry Austin Jr. will be one of the best he does so well here he's got a good balance of being aggressive and then understanding that the, the charge is there or the potential for a charge is there he avoids the contact there and then dumps it down to the foe for a dunk well, he doesn't dunk it too many times these days Darius certainly not compared to year one in the British Basketball League but <laughs> he showed us he can still get up there well the uh, shot clock running out they got themselves in a hole there I don't think they realized there was 14 on it no they did not that you, you can tell with the reactions of the players when the shot clock buzzer goes off yeah, what's that, that? <laughs> <laughs> that's Miguel trying to use his size to back down good Gets himself into a bit of a muddle, but gets it to go. That is so tough. You thought he lost his balance there on his elevation on the jump shot, but it doesn't matter. Well, that 10-point lead didn't last very long for Surrey, did it? It's down to three now. I've seen some drama at the sports park <laughs> over the indeed. years. They have Strapping indeed. themselves in for a bit more. Defoe fouling Ogan Dengby. Well, that's... Uh, Another one that Darius agrees with the referee on. Did you ever, did, did, did the foe ever foul you and put a hand up? He fouled me every time he, he never put his ever. hands up. Yeah. Never. <laughs> Lawrence, little change of pace, Andrew Lawrence. He's been excellent, Andrew Lawrence. I think his ability to recognize when the game's on the line and then step up, he, he's done that. 
Well, he's got the last seven points for his team, and they've certainly needed them. Here's Defoe with the mid-range, back iron. Good. Lawrence stumbles, still gets the pass to Ogun Dengby. Foul. And one! Flex them guns down! <laughs> wow, he's done so well. The duel starts with Andrew Lawrence. It was a definite turnover, but he tips the ball to his fellow veteran, Tewa Gadembe, who gets it right in the heart of that defense. Absorbs the contact, finish off the backboard, and the flex to finish. Surrey's what? ability to respond to each run has been has been, been impressive, very good today. It? And it's these been... are the ones that ha they haven't been able to do earlier yeah. in the season and, and then result in losses. Well, they've been uh, questioned a couple of times in this second half and they've thus far managed to respond to them all. Timeout is called. By the time Newcastle get the ball back, they could be down eight. But I guess the counterpoint to that is Newcastle have recovered each time they've got into a double-figure hole, and Coach Stuckel will be hoping that uh, Newcastle can do that as well. Yeah. It's an important game for them. If they lose this one, then fourth becomes very difficult for them. The uh, last couple of games, they're going to have to win them. Even fifth becomes a bit of a challenge because they've lost their head-to-head -head with... Leicester. Well, it's very, very much been a game of veterans here today. Well, there's a two-time MVP that Surrey can't call on in Justin Robinson. We'd love to see him out there, given how Lawrence is performing and Defoe and Teo, all these guys. Oh, for sure. And that's the quality that he brings. It's not just his ability, it's his decision-making. And he's made this team better this year. There's a reason why they're firmly in the playoffs this year. And it's been mostly due to players like him and the experience of Teo Akindembe, Andrew Lawrence. And the mixture and blend they've got as well of players, you know, younger in their, earlier in their careers. Paddy Wang coming back for a second season. And this guy, Coach Lloyd Gardner, He's been through the pain several seasons now of missing out on the playoffs. And now he's got his team firmly in that spot. Well, of course, they're in the hunt to try and chase down Bristol in seventh. If they win today, they'll push it to next week at least, even if Bristol do beat Manchester later on tonight. That game's 8 o'clock. You can join Ant and myself for that. Defoe has to get it away at the end of the shot clock. Darius Defoe. Wow, speaking about individuals who recognize what needs to be done to win a basketball game. Another big play. He made the, the, the buzzer beater before, had he not shot it just a half a second too late with a shot clock violation. Wang dancing in the lane to the finger roll. Great play there from Paddy at Wang. And that's what he can bring. He can, can create his own shot. And he's got the athleticism then to explode towards the rim for the easy finishes. Austin. Austin into the key, just a bit short, batted up in the air. Sorry, able to come down with it. Wang, I thought for a second he was going to go. I was thinking, hold on a second, wait for help. And in the end, he head down, pushes McGill to the floor, and offensive foul called. Yeah, good defense then. And Ricky McGill will get a lot of plaudits for his offense, but defensively, he's had a good influence on this game. You see him move his feet there, make sure he's in front of the defender and drop with the shoulder from Paddy at Wang. Clear offensive foul, good play. Only one player in double digit, sorry, two players in double digit figures scoring for Newcastle Eagles. Jordan Johnson with 18 and Darius Defoe with 10. Well, Darius. Doesn't look like he's going to be adding to those 10, does he? That looks like a lower back problem for him. Here's Johnson firing up the three. 
Rebound pulled in by Jamison. And, well, they will miss Defoe when he's off the court. They, they're two points up. He's plus two in the plus minus when he's out there. He does so many little things for them off the ball, particularly I, defensively. Yeah, agreed, Dan. And I think it's multiplied. His presence is even more so important when you've got Tars Green struggling like he is today. Tars Green, four points, one for seven from the field. He's minus eight on the index. So... You know, either Taz Green can figure out a way to establish himself within the last five minutes of this game, or you know, Newcastle Eagles have lost themselves in an interior pre um, presence there with the absence of Darius Defoe. Oh, Wang missing from the free throw line. They've been so good from the free throw line today. Sorry, this is not the time to start missing. What's the sport park without no drama, Dan? <laughs> yeah, indeed. He makes the second. Well, just over five to play here in Guildford. Surrey with a nine-point cushion, but nothing's felt safe thus far. McGill, who exploded last time he was here. Ooh, that one was halfway down. He struggled as well, shooting-wise. Nice pass, and Jameson jams it in. Night and day on the offensive end. For Surrey, scorchers went compared to the Eagles. And it's a double-figure lead for the scorchers. Timeout call by the Eagles. We'll have the conclusion right after this. Well, Andrew Lawrence has been pulling the strings and he found Jameson rolling to the hole. And Surrey are back into a double figure lead with less than five to play. Defense the cry from the Sports Park faithful. McGill spinning, blocked, fouled. He will shoot two. No, good play there. What you need, you need something out of the timeout. And Ricky McGill's created himself there. Spin middle. That's sorry, that drive middle spin outside the left hand finish. It's only the second personal foul on uh, Steele. They're okay for fouls. Sorry, Newcastle. Have a little issue with Whitfield and Del Pesh both on four. McGill took a few bounces to drop, but it does go in. Not been great for the free throw line today, Dan. Really struggled. 20 for 29, I believe that is. I think it's sort of comparatively. The other team shooting 90%. 70% looks really bad, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Foul court off the ball. Jameson and uh, Stugler is arguing for a travel, but it was Jordan Johnson and Jameson underneath that the uh, foul was called. It's one of them, so the foul is under the basket. You can see Jameson's got the switch. Wang, oh, he might have shuffled his feet, maybe. You can see why Coach Stutel is arguing, but it, the, the reality is uh, the foul is called by a different referee, basically, on the baseline. And uh, Jameson will shoot too because they're over the limit. One rebound away from a double-double, Saquon Jameson. It's not quite as big a numbers as he posted last time, but he'd trade that for the win, for sure. He goes one for two from the free throw line. Well, I think they've uh, just made an error, and they gave him the point on the uh, scoreboard. And they've taken it right back off. Easy come, easy go. Yeah. We'll uh, go back to the sideline possession. Johnson being waved into the front court. So McGill can't go into the back court to receive it. Makes the pass a little bit more tricky, although Austin makes it easy. Johnson, step away. Short on the three. Ricochets out to Whitfield. McGill driving hard through the contact. And one for Ricky McGill. Nice play there from Ricky McGill. And I think what I have to give credit to is his ability to just stay with the process. He's had a pretty horrid time in terms of shooting the basketball today. Four for 14, but what he has remained is present in the game. His defense has been high energy, it's been intense, it's been there. And then plays like that, he understands, can change a game. Well, he's cut it down to eight points. Good. End. Gooden trying to find some room, does and drops it in. Good shot from Cameron Gooden. Yeah, he's done so well. The Darius Defoe was so concerned about him being beaten off the dribble there. He took away that right hand drive. What it did is give him space. Head down, Austin, but he can't convert. Rare miss there from Austin Jr. Usually really good in, 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 that, in, in those areas. It's a 10-point Surrey lead with three to play. Gooden for three. Oh, Cam Gooden! A big shot from the top to stretch the lead out to 13. It's huge, five massive points there for Gooden, who could have just put his team in the position here to seal the deal. Look at this, tough shot. Well, that could be five crucial points for Surrey Scorchers from Cameron Gooden. That three followed on from this one, where he just got enough room, and he's turned it into a 13-point lead. Well, this is, this is as tough as a period as it gets here for the Eagles. This could be a really bad weekend for them, losing at home on Friday night, and now having to travel down to the Surrey Scorch. Isn't that they're playing like a team as well that have got legs that have just played a, a game. Well, they've still got to play uh, Surrey, uh, sorry, still got to play Cheshire and then uh, Plymouth, the Newcastle Eagles. The Cheshire game is actually 
uh, at home, I believe. And uh, Surrey Scorchers, well, that's not an easy finish, is it? <laughs> well, I don't know, you say that, I mean, no, you don't want to be away to London, but at home to Leicester, you know, Newcastle are higher than Leicester in the table. You were playing last time Surrey beat Leicester, I'm just going to point that out. I think you were playing for Plymouth, mate, it was that long ago. Wow. It was a long time ago. <laughs> so, anyway, but you never know. It, uh, it is, as you say, it is the, It is possible. Did the Plymouth franchise beat Leicester this year? Yeah, a... that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, those, those two runs were the two longest in all time. Sorry, did get a draw in a playoff game against Leicester. Were you in that team, or was that after you retired? What year was it? I can't remember. That's why I'm asking you if you were in the team. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Here's Jameson down the lane. Can't convert. Quick outlet and not finished by Austin. Oh my goodness. And a foul on the... Everybody's up here. I think Newcastle wanted a goal turn. Sorry, you're happy. There's a technical foul called, I think, against Austin. There's another technical foul called. There's another technical, I think he's been disqualified. Coach Doodle is going wild on the sidelines, and I think he's been given two tees in the process, and he's still fuming. Wow. Oh, he's absolutely livid, Coach Doodle. Now he's going to have to make his way off. Well, they thought there was a goal to Newcastle. And uh, unfortunately for him, it's a long walk to the uh, changing rooms here in Surrey. He's got to go all the way past all the fans who are more than happy to wave him off. Well, it's, uh, it's not the best place to get disqualified from as an away coach because the away bench is so far from the from the exit but Keith Williams called all three technicals there the first one was on Larry Austin and then coach Doodle well he was less than impressed and once he'd started the first one came and well if you don't stop the second one is not going to be too far behind and it wasn't too far behind was no, it no nope some referees will give you a little more leeway than others, but... Wow. Dan, have we got a spreadsheet for um, which referees average those technicals per game? Uh, no, but I would say Keith is pretty high on that. <laughs> Neil Wilkinson I'd put up yes. near the top yeah. end of that, of that as oh, well. I've got a technical for both of those guys. Yeah. yeah. And so Keith... Keith it must have given you more than one, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't a prolific technical guy, was I? That no, was very no. level-headed. You were, yeah, you were. <laughs> Lloyd Gardner just uh, backing away to his coaching area just to make sure he doesn't join in the fun. But here's another former coach of yours, Gary Stronach, the assistant coach in Newcastle, coached you in Plymouth in your early days. Yeah, really well-established coach. He was... Uh, it was really big for me in my development uh, when I was 15, 16 years old. I used to practice with the Plymouth Raiders, uh, who were in the NBL Division One then, and then uh, they made the transition to the British Basketball League. Uh, I went off to America and uh, went to play pro in France, and then it was Coach Gary Stronach who actually brought me back to the British Basketball League. So yeah, uh, you know he's Coach Doodle leaving. But he's, uh, his team are being guided by a very experienced British Basketball League coach in Gary Stronach. Well, that flurry of technicals means there's a flurry of uh, free throws as well. And you feel like they uh, have a chance to put it away here. It's still not out of reach with no. 2.12 to go. No, it's not. It would have been interesting if Larry Austin had finished that play. And uh, oh, some well, free throws here as well, yeah, just to make things just, interesting. As you say, it's not the sports park if there isn't a little <laughs> bit of drama at the end. Well, famously as well, Coach Gary Stronach's responsible for bringing Drew Lasker to these shores. So Gosh. without the recruitment of 
from Gary Stronach, we wouldn't be seeing Drew on the so sidelines with that bow tie. That's the guy to blame if you want to send your emails <laughs> to Gary Stronach. <laughs> no, we love Drew, really. Well, he's uh, forced into the head coaching role, at least for the last two minutes here. And Surrey trying to take some air out of the ball and just run this one down. see a lot of coach disqualifications over the course of the season but we've seen them in back-to-back -back nights now in the British Basketball League one at the beginning one at the end of a game and sorry are going to push their fight for seventh at least to next week they still got work to do to catch Bristol but they're still going at it and there's a little coming together there all okay Keith Williams has got it under control. Mohammed. Mohammed barreling his way through, and the pass goes out of bounds. Look, the game's out of reach now, but it's still game management. You still you don't really want to be doing unnecessary turnovers at this time. You always want to practice. Good habits. And Larry Austin Jr. finally gets ones to go at the rim. He's had a really difficult day today. Is it definitely out of reach? I'm just thinking one more turn <laughs> over here. And he gets the single figures, but I think they're gonna tick it down. Wang. Now the shot clock being counted down by the fans. Wang drives in, tosses it up high and in off the glass. Well, he's done really well there. He shot the ball high, and no one can reach that one. Paddy and Wang with a finish. Well, they are out of reach now as Jameson gets the steal. And this game, which has been hard for Newcastle throughout, is going to finish in disappointment. Their coach disqualified in the last two minutes, and it's got away from them really here. And Surrey, well, they've... Uh, Going to register another home win. And uh, the home fans getting themselves to their feet in order to celebrate. This will be their eighth home win of the season. And uh, well, it's one of those where you kind of hope that the shot clock goes to zero before the game clock. But, well, they're going to shoot it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And that will do it. The Surrey Scorchers have beaten the Newcastle Eagles. And you can see the reaction from the fans. They've really enjoyed that. A great performance from their team and a great win. Yeah, they, they, they are having fun in there. There's been smiles from the very first play of the game today. And, you know, I always like to see the joy because this is a group of fans that have endured the hardest yeah. of struggles year after year of not making the playoffs. But what they have here this year is they have a team that have played collectively. <laughs> Look at that, the front row are going wild. <laughs> <laughs> the shirts are off. Well, you think of the Newcastle fans with the shirts off, but it's the Surrey fans celebrating there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a valiant effort from the Surrey Scorchers who, who have always done that. They've always played with such energy and passion in this in this arena. They just haven't been able to convert that to, to results, but today they have. Not an easy pick for player of the game. Where did you go at? No, there wasn't, Dan. They've got really good contributions today from Surrey Scorchers. A special mention to Andrew Lawrence, who I thought was excellent. He hit five big points in a row. He was guiding them with 12 points, eight, re eight assists, excuse me. But it, for me, it was the rookie from Utah Tech. It was Cam Gooden, an excellent performance from him and the finishing clinical shots down the stretch well that was uh, as good a performance for sorry down the stretch as uh, they could have hoped for with big shot after big shot and was just been able to keep Newcastle at arm's length yeah and Cam good and you, you you like his game he's exciting he's five foot eleven I think he might be five ten but it didn't matter his size he's able to be so crafty to get himself space and look at him, he's always attacking. I like the proactive movements towards the rim, sizing up the defender on that occasion, knocking it down, and that was a big shot. Well, with Justin Robinson out, they definitely need contributions from him. Taylor's got his 
kids out. And he, I mean, all the vets today were uh, were pulling up. I know you went with the rookie in the end, but they got good performances up and down. They did, and yeah, Terrell Hickdome was excellent. I thought he'd give them some really good quality minutes today and some smart, intelligent plays on both ends of the floor. Darius Defoe, of course, did what he needed to do, but uh, it was the sorry score to do prevail. Let's have a look at the... Uh, Numbers in this game, a lot of free throws, right? there. 30 free throws apiece. Sorry, just edging it 24, uh, 21. Made a few more threes. I mean, in small margins, those are the differences. Yeah, and look, you know, 70% is not a terrible free throw shooting percentage from Newcastle, because, but it is nine missed free throws down. And you make half of those, you make the game a little bit more tighter down the stretch. You put the pressure on Surrey Scorchers and it changes the whole dynamics of the, of the game. But Surrey did a really good job of just consistently contributing throughout the, throughout the, uh, the scoreboard, excuse me. Well, let's have a look at uh, the results so far in the British Basketball League. Cheshire winning on Wednesday, Bristol on Thursday. Last night, London on the road before Sheffield put one down for the home teams, beating Caledonia 69-62. Great win here for Surrey. Coming up at 8 o'clock, Ant and I will be back for Bristol Flyers against the Manchester Giants. Do join us for that one. And then tomorrow, another doubleheader. Sheffield against Cheshire should be a great encounter. And Caledonia trying to keep the pressure on the Phoenix host, the Plymouth City Patriots at 6 p.m. Let's have a look at the standings. Well, they're one game closer to the Bristol Flyers. Remember, Surrey hold the head-to-head, -head, so they just need to finish level with Bristol to get that higher seeding. And Newcastle losing, and that's going to make top four very difficult for them now. It's been a disappointing weekend for the Newcastle Eagles with two defeats, and. It has, Dan. You know, they had complete uh, control of their destiny heading into the weekend. Now they do not. They're going to have to have um, results go their way in other areas. And you, know, you can't help but feel that that loss on Friday has had a deeper impact and in, 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 in sort of sinking into today. They were just weren't there. They looked out of sync offensively. And they really struggled, I think, to compete with, with Surrey Scorchers across the whole four quarters. Well, a great victory, though, for the Surrey Scorchers. We'll be back in an hour's time for round two as Bristol take on the Manchester Giants. Join us for that one. But for now, goodbye.